Okay. So, let's crack this loose. Now, I'm pressing down on these keys with quite a bit of pressure. Take this screw out. Put it with the other 19. It's the same same screw. Okay. Now, continuing to press down. I'm kind of defeating myself because this is kind of pinched in here. But we're going to get it. Let me try on the other end. Hold me on. I never had one this bad. Mm. There we go. All right, now, why? Oh, why? Are we holding this down? All those screws that we removed go up through the key slip rail bracket, through this hole in this sheet metal, and up into this piece of uh, sheet metal here. It's a sheet metal uh, strip, which happened to have these are the keyboard downstop felts. Um, but you notice this, each screw goes up just to the left of of this vertical wall here so you know that it, it pinches these two together and this kind of keeps them separated but when you get down here notice there's no metal wall but what there is is a small aluminum spacer so by keeping my thumb down on these keys I've trapped that spacer and it's aluminum if it falls down in there good luck getting it back so anyway now look at this want to change your downstop felts there they are okay so before we put this all back together let's have a little look at what we're doing this is where the downstop felts are and you see all these holes remember those 20 screws we took out these holes are tapped hey here's Oakley hi baby camera shy anyway these holes are tapped and this is just a piece of flat flat stock like sheet metal I guess pretty heavy gauge and you notice the downstop felt is offset to one side. And where this goes down here, you can see that it's notched. So this piece of metal fits in there nicely. And the idea is we got to get these screws up through these holes and tapped into that metal strip. That's where all 20 of them go. Now, remember we had the discussion down here about this last screw. Where is that sucker? Way out here. See? That's where that spacer goes. So, that's going to be the very first screw we put back in. But what I like to do is I like to take my downstop rail I like to set it in place. Man, this is hard to do with one, one hand and trying to keep your camera steady. So I like to set it in place and I come down, I don't know, somewhere in here. And I'm going to feed one screw in. Set this camera down.
Okay. So I've got one screw right in there. And what that's doing is that's keeping this located. So now it's going to be much easier for me to get this guy in. So what I like to do is come in here and just make sure, make absolutely certain that I'm located properly. Now I've got one screw in down there, but nothing stops me from doing this here. Wow, it looks like this thing, that doesn't look like factory to me. I don't know why anybody else would have been in here, but that sucker seems to be ground down there. See that? I don't know about that. Anyway. Oh, look at that, man. That's why that sucker didn't want to come out of there. Okay. There we go. I'm home. So you can see when that gets tightened down, it leaves your an equal space. So now we got that in. Now before you get too crazy, off camera, I put the new felts in here. These are new Trex upstop felts. Um, let me tell you something, in all seriousness, when it comes to aftermarket replacement parts for Hammond organs, you cannot beat Trek 2 products, period. Um, anyway, so now, that's where I want that spacer to stay. So once again, I'm pinched. Now this is going to be, this is going to be a tough one. Because that spacer is definitely, doesn't seem to want to take that screw. Ah. Okay, so I've got this guy uh, started in down here. Uh, I've got one other one down here. That's to keep this from moving too much. I did put the upstop felts on here. Trek 2 upstop felts. Here's the other end of carriage bolt. And these, there's six of them, or five of them, four of them, they go in between here and here. So what you want to do is kind of get yourself lined up and feed those guys in. take that back they go between they go above this this bar big mistake so you want to get this thing to go in where it's supposed to go now at this time I'm going to put these two keys down and take this out All I'm concerned about at this time is just getting this one screw in, and we're in. See how simple that was? Now I'm going to move the camera, uh, and well, before I do that, we'll take this screw out down here. Now, just got to get all these keys underneath the rest of the key slip rip. I can pivot this thing all over the place, and I'm just going to go through here and get these keys down, man. I should use my level. Try and 
get these things down under the they gotta they gotta fall in the cones have to fall in. Ah oh, come on you dummy. Get me off this crazy thing. and screws to put in two bolts and we're done now that we've got uh, we got this one in down here the goal is to get a screw in down towards this end and we're doing this just to get this thing lucky am I that lucky I am okay so now I got that one threaded now I'm not tightening any of these just loosely putting them in. And, you know, the, the vertical wall is just to the right of the screw. Man, I'm getting lucky here. So when I put the screw in, I kind of run it up along that wall. And if you go straight in, I mean, I'm just getting incredibly lucky here. Sometimes it's not this easy. So I put all 20 screws back underneath uh, the key slip rail. I also reinstalled our two bolts at either end. I have not put the cheek box back on yet, but uh, so the question is, is it worth it? Well, let's see. Here's the original. Here's the Trek 2. Best bang for your buck out of anything you can do to a Hammond organ, change the upstop felts.